Hello do-it-yourselfers and welcome to the Backwoods Mechanic Channel. Today we're going to be bleeding the brakes on a 2003 Ford F-150 truck. Now regardless of what vehicle you're working on, they all have the exact same concept applied to them when you're bleeding the brake system. As long as you've got the right tools for the job, then you can do it by yourself, no problem. Instead of me doing this video like others have throughout YouTube, where they jack the vehicles up and they show you things and describe to you all this detailed stuff of how you do this, that, and the other, I'm going to do it the way most do-it-yourselfers might be doing it at home. Whenever somebody's going to work on their own vehicle, they're wanting to do it themselves, but they don't want to have to feel like, oh, I gotta buy this, and I gotta buy that, and I gotta do this, and I gotta do that. I'm gonna show you the most simplistic ways of doing things by using the tools in a way that most do-it-yourselfers might use them. Now, somebody might be in a situation in a tough spot such as we're in COVID-19 right now. Everybody's pretty well on quarantine except for a select few group of essential people. So everybody knows what it's like to probably have some financial hardships in your life and you might try to cut some corners, save yourself some money by doing some things yourself. So I'm gonna show you how to do this with, let's say just the basic bleeding kit and the ground. I'm not gonna jack the truck up. I'm just gonna use the bleeding kit and a 3 h drive wrench to do this job. Allow me to show you. Now what you'll need is your basic automotive tune-up and brake bleeding kit, such as this one here by OEM Tools. It does automotive tune-ups, diagnostic testing, one-person brake bleeding, and much more. It'll run you right around $30 at your local AutoZone. And if you buy it, it will come with instructions on how to use it and how to go about doing different things with it. So to learn about this kit and many other different tools, just go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Now these kits, they come with these different hoses that you can use for attachments. And that's gonna help make your life so much easier. You just gotta put them together. And it comes with your little reservoir right here which catches the brake fluid. We'll even use a basic little Stanley 38 12 point wrench right here. Cause most people, when you go to the store, you buy some tools, you have them in 12 point. They got Stanley all over the place, such as, you know, Walmart, different places, which they're selling out of now. But still, the point is, most people ain't gonna go out here and buy the line wrenches. You're gonna go out here and you're gonna buy a regular set of wrenches. So I'm gonna use what most people have got in their toolbox to do this job. This does come with different adapters so you can fit a wide variety of different things. If you come across different bleeder plugs, different sizes, different jobs that you're gonna use this kit for. For the most part, the two long hoses right here is gonna do everything you need with most brake lines. Then you plug one end up to the tip of your brake bleeder gun here one end up to the reservoir and whenever it starts building up pressure and you release it that fluid's going to get sucked in and dumped out right inside this little reservoir right here now some people will work on these and they'll tell you that you can go all the way to the furthest brake caliber on your vehicle furthest away from the master cylinder plug this up and just bleed the entire system or you can go through one caliber at a time, starting with the closest one. So in this case, you'll go right beneath the driver's side, then you'll go to the passenger side, then you'll go back to the driver's side rear, then the passenger side rear, and it should bleed the entire system. Now you can always take and cut your front wheels to the left or to the right, depending on which caliber it is that you're working on, and make sure you get in there and break loose all of your bleeder plugs first. And on the driver's side right here, it's right here in the back, you get this little cap, you pull it right off, right here is your plug. If you start up and under the vehicle, all you gotta do is make sure you break it loose. That way it's good to go. Then you'll wanna put your hose right here on this, pump up pressure, release it, shut it back off. Before you do any of that, make sure you have brake fluid in your reservoir and you have plenty of brake fluid on hand. Now, right now, I have my wrench on here. I have my hose on here. I've set the reservoir up so you can see it. Now we're going to pump up air. Put pressure on this gauge. Make sure that it's going to hold air. Right there we've got about 15 pounds and it's holding. Right there, we've got about 18 pounds in its holding, as you can see. Now, I've just got to crack open the bleeder, a quarter of a turn, and it's starting to suck the brake fluid out. And it's going to dump it in that reservoir up above, as you can see right there. 
Then I tighten up the bleeder plug again. And then you can add more pressure. You keep doing this same exact pattern over and over again until you see that clear brake fluid. As you can see, it is holding pressure. Now I'm going to crack it open. And it's going to suck the brake fluid down into the reservoir again. And I'm going to do this over and over again. And once I start seeing that clear brake fluid come through, then I know it's bled through the master cylinder with the new fluid down into the caliber. And then I'll make my way to the next one. Now once you've seen the clear fluid start coming out into the hose, it's time that you start to dump the dirty fluid. Do not put the dirty fluid back into your reservoir because you're just going to contaminate your system all over again. You want nice, new, fresh brake fluid throughout the entire system. So take it, dump it out into an old container, put the lid on it, and do the same all the way around the vehicle. As you can see here, this is what the dirty fluid looks like. Then go back to your master cylinder. Make sure it's got clean fluid in it. As you'll see here, it is going to be crystal clear. That's what it is supposed to look like. Then cut your wheels, move over to the passenger side, and do it again. Now we're on the passenger side. Oh yeah, we're holding pressure. Lay that gauge down where you can see it. Crack open the bleeder. As it slowly goes down to the zero mark, I will shut the bleeder back off. And I've got these hoses tied up here to where it will not interfere and it will not go down into my pump. If it goes down into the pump, then it could ruin it. But you do the exact same thing on this side as you did the driver's side until you start seeing that clear fluid come out and then you make your way to the back. Now I'll put this directly under this hose because there's something I want you all to see specifically. I'm going to hold it nice and tight. I'm going to put pressure on this up to about 20 pounds again because there's no brake fluid that's actually going in the reservoir. That's because there's air coming out of it. Whenever I release this, you're going to see the air bubbles coming through that hose. As you can see it right there, if there's no fluid coming out, it's because it's sucking air out of the line and it's moving where it's got that U shape to it. I got it kind of spooled up in a circle there. That way I can see it. Now if it starts bubbling up, coming out new brake fluid, and then we're getting closer. But as long as it's sucking out that air right there, then this is doing its job. And there was a lot of air in this line. Now we've got our way work to the back driver's side here. And right here is your bleeder. As you can see, the hoses come down through here. And they go in to the left side first. And then they go to the passenger side over there last. So that's why you do it in rotation. Closest to the master cylinder, furthest away. Now, as you can see it there, I do have pressure. It's holding. And you'll get a good shot right here at seeing how this works as soon as I crack it open. As you can see there, all them bubbles flying out because there was all kinds of air in this system. And it's filling the reservoir up. And we're going to do this over and over again until it's a steady stream of clear brake fluid. Then you'll have one more to get to, and that's this last one right here. We'll get it broke loose, and then get this one bled out, and then I will be done with this vehicle. I'll have to test drive it and make sure everything's working good. If not, I'll have to come back and do it again. Bleed it until there's no bubbles left. Now, on a side note, if you ever do run into this situation where you could have a stripped bleeder plug and you really don't want to have to take the tire off you know you can always go get yourself one of these this is a quarter inch drive breaker bar and i know a lot of people make fun of these companies for having quarter inch drive breaker bars but every tool has a purpose 
but you six point on there you can get in there in a nice tight space and then put enough leverage on this thing to break them loose without stripping them out then you can put your wrench on there and go right back to work again make sure when you put these hoses on here that they're on there nice and tight you don't want no air seeping around the outside edges of them you can put grease around the outside there just to make sure it seals off any air bubbles that could be coming from around the grease plug or you can put yourself a little clamp on there either way have everything up and out of the way make sure your muffler is not hot because you do not want this to get down inside of your actual gun and i like routing mine around different things that way it holds it up in the air out of the way i can do everything even one-handed i'm doing this one-handed and holding a phone so it can be done you can do it yourself with the right tools save yourself some money save yourself some time waiting on someone to help you bleed your brakes and just learn how to do it yourself as you can see here we'll check our pressure it's holding pressure at 20 it's not moving all right so now all i gotta do is crack her open as you can see right there air bubbles are coming out it's going into the reservoir all right now as you can see right there this looks much different than what you've seen earlier when we first began you can see through the fluid so that is the new fluid finally coming out the back back here now i just got to go and make sure that all of the air bubbles are out to the best of my knowledge and i'll drive it test it out if i feel like there's any issues i'll come back and i'll do it all over again you got to do what you got to do but it's best just to take your time now i'm not saying that this is going to be some simple job you'll get done in 30 minutes because every vehicle is different depending on what kind of damage what kind of hoses which directions you start in you know a certain vehicles have uh you know different types of sensors on them that makes it a little bit difficult you just gotta check out the make and model of vehicle that you've got sometimes you have to unhook the battery you know just depends and you will have to periodically make sure to keep a check on your master cylinder make sure that it does not run out of fluid but it's best if you're going to bleed the whole system to start from one end all the way to the last thing and just bleed the whole system out get all the old fluid out of it so that you know you got all new fluid in here and that the vehicle has been completely bled of air well do it yourselfers i hope this video has helped you in some shape form or fashion now the reason i've done this video the way i've done this video without any jacks without any added tools is because i wanted to get a good feel for the average do-it-yourselfer out here who's wanting to do this yourself with the bare minimum tools that you might be able to afford you know sometimes it's cheaper to buy the tool to do the job than it is to pay the shop to do the job sometimes you haven't got two or three people to help you do the job you know and my advice to you is watch all the videos on youtube watch and get everybody's opinion from professionals do-it-yourselfers everybody's got different methods different styles to how they tell you to do things or how they do things you know different stuff works for different people it all depends on you the situation you're in you know what you intend on doing but either way watch all the videos out here you got all kinds of different name brand bleeder kits you can get some that's the master set that you can plug up to your master cylinder and you can bleed it from the master cylinder or you can get the little oem tools or you can get the mighty vac there's a bunch of different ones out here look at all the tool review videos and then base what you buy off of what you feel is best for you get everybody's opinions on it get the ones that you think is going to work the best hear everybody's opinion see everybody's reviews and go from there because different things will work differently for people depending on what type of profession you're in, what it is that you're working on. I mean, otherwise, if you want to see some different how-to do-it-yourself videos, that's why I make videos like this. I try to put myself in the situation that people might be looking for. You know, you might be watching this video and getting ready to do the exact same situation. So I want to experience the same scenarios. I don't want to have to, you know, feel like everybody's watching the video and then they're like, I don't got a jack. Uh, I don't got an impact. I don't got this. I don't got that. And if they feel like they're going to have to buy a jack or an impact gun just to do the job, it might deter them from doing the job. So as you've seen, no jacks, no nothing on this Ford truck. Got up and under it, done the job that I needed to do with a $30 tool and a little 3H driver in so leave a comment down below let me know if it helped you 
check out some of the tool reviews, how-to videos on this channel. Pop the clutch on that subscribe button. And as always, make repairs great again.